Then came a fiery breath of waking life, and there arose from the dim gulf of things the strange creations of a thinking sense, existence as half real and half dream. A life was there that hoped not to survive. Beings were born who perished without trace. Events that were a formless drama's limbs and actions driven by a blind creature will. A seeking power found out its road to form. Patterns were built of love and joy and pain and symbol figures for the moods of life. An insect hedonism fluttered and crawled and basked in a sunlit nature's surface thrills and dragon raptures, python agonies, crawled in the marsh and mire and licked the sun. Huge armored strengths shook the frail quaking ground. Great puissant creatures with a dwarfish brain and pygmy tribes imposed their small life drift. In a dwarf model of humanity, nature now launched the extreme experience and the master point of a design's caprice, luminous result of a half-conscious climb on rungs to extras sublimities and grotesques to massive from infinitesimal shapes to a subtle balancing of body and soul to an order of intelligent littleness. Around him, in the moment beats of time, the kingdom of the animal self arose, where deed is all, and mind is still half born, and the heart obeys a dumb, unseen control. The force that works by the light of ignorance, our animal experiment began, crowding with conscious creatures, our world's key, but to the outward only where they lie. Only the reply to touches and surfaces and to the creak of need that drove their lives. A body that knew not its own soul within, they are lived and longed at wrath and joy and grief. A mind was there that met the objective world as if a stranger or enemy at its door. Its thoughts were needed by the shocks of sense. It captured not the spirit in the form. It entered not the heart of what it saw. It looked not for the power behind the act. It studied not the hidden motive in things, nor strove to find the meaning of it all. Beings were there who wore a human form, absorbed the lived in the passion of the scene, but knew not who they were or why they lived. Life had for them no aim save nature's joy and the stimulus and delight of outer things. They worked for the body's wants, they craved no more, content to breathe, 
to feel, to sense, to act, identified with the spirit's outward shell, the veiled spectator watching from their depths, fixed not his inward eye upon himself, nor turned to find the author of the plot. He saw the drama only, and the stage. There was no brooding stress of deeper sense. The burden of reflection was not borne. Mind looked on nature with unknowing eyes, adored her wounds, and feared her monstrous strokes. It pondered not on the magic of her laws, it thirsted not for the secret wells of truth, but made a register of crowding facts and strong sensations on a vivid thread. It hunted and it fled and sniffed the winds or slothed in earth, in sunshine and soft air. It sought the engrossing context of the world, but only to feed the surface sense with bliss. These felt lives quiver in the outward touch. They could not feel behind the touch the soul to guard their form of self from nature's harm, to enjoy and to survive was all their care. The narrow horizon of their days was filled with things and creatures that could not help and hurt. The world's values hung upon their little self. Isolated, cramped in the vast unknown, to save their small lives from surrounding death, they made a tiny circle of defense against the siege of the huge universe. They preyed upon the world and were its prey, but never dreamed to conquer and be free. Obeying the world powers, hints and farm taboos, a scanty part they drew from a rich store. There was no conscious code and no life plan. The patterns of thinking of a little group fixed a traditional behavior's law. Ignorant of soul, save as a ray to within, tied to a mechanism of unchanging lives and to a dull, usual sense and feelings beat, they turned in groups of animal desire. In walls of stone, Fenced round they were and were, did by a bended selfishness a small good, or wrought a dreadful wrong and cruel pain on sentient lives and thought they did no ill. Hardened from the sack of happy, peaceful homes and gorged with slaughter, plunder, rape, and fire. They made of human selves their helpless prey. A drove of captives led to lifelong hope, a torture spectacle made and holiday, mocking or thrilled by their torn victim spanks, admiring themselves as titans and as gods, proudly they sang their high and glorious deeds, and praise their victory and their splendid force. An animal in the instinctive herd, pushed by light impulses, forced by common needs, each in his own kind saw his ego's glass. All served the aim and action of the pack. Those like himself, by blood, or custom kin, to him were parts of his life, 
his adjunct selves. His personal nebulas, constituting stars, satellite companions of his solar eye. A master of his life's environment, a leader of a huddled human mass, herding for safety on a dangerous earth, he gathered them round him as if minor powers to make a common front against the world, or weak and soul on an indifferent earth as a fortress for his undefended heart, or else to heal his body's loneliness. In others than his kind, he sensed a foe, an alien, unlike force, to shun and fear a stranger and adversary to hate and slay. For he lived, as lives the solitary brute. At war with all, he bore his single fate. Absorbed in the present act, the fleeting days, none thought to look beyond the hour's gains, or dreamed to make this earth a fairer world or felt some touch divine surprise his heart. The gladness that the fugitive moment gave, the desire grasp, the bliss, the experience won, movement and speed and strength were joy enough, and bodily longings share and quarrel and play, and tears and laughter and the need called love. In war and clasp, these life wants join the all life, wrestling of a divided unity, inflicting mutual grief and happiness in ignorance of the self, forever one. Arming its creatures with delight and hope, a half awakened nation struggled there to know by sight and touch the outside of things. Instinct was formed. In memory's crowded sleep, the past lived on as in a bottomless sea, inverting into half thought the quickened sense she felt around for truth with fumbling heads, clutched to her the little she could reach and seize, and put aside in a subconscious cave. So must the dim being grow in light and force and rise to his higher destiny at last, look up to God and round at the universe and learn by failure and progress by fall and battle with environment and doom. By suffering, discover his deep soul and by position, grow to his own vast. Halfway she stopped and found her faith no more. Still nothing was achieved but to begin. Yet finished seemed the circle of her force. Only she had beaten out sparks of ignorance. Only the life could think and not the mind. Only the sense could feel and not the soul. Only was lit some heat of the flame of life, some joy to be, some rapturous leaves of sense. All was an impetus of half-conscious force, a spirit sprawling, drowned in dense life form, a vague self grasping at the shape of things. Behind all moved, seeking for vessels to hold, a first raw vintage of the grapes of God. On earth's mud, a spill of the supernal bliss, intoxicating the stupefied soul and mind, a heady wine of rapture, dark and crude, dim, 
uncast yet into spiritual form, obscure inhabitant of the world's sublime core, an unborn goddess will a mute desire. A third creation now revealed its face. A mold of body's early mind was made. A glint of light kindled the obscure world force. It dowered a driven world with the same idea and armed the act with thought's dynamic point. A small thinking being watched the works of time. A difficult evolution from below called a masked intervention from above. Else this great blind inconscient universe could never have disclosed its hidden mind or even in blinkers worked in beast and man. The intelligence that devised the cosmic scheme. At first he saw a dim, obscure mind power moving, concealed by matter and dumb life. A current thing, it streamed in life's vast flow, tossing and drifting under a drifting sky. Amid the surge and glimmering tremendous wash, released in splash of sense and feelings waves. In the deep midst of an unconscious world, its huddled waves and form of consciousness ran, pressing and eddying through a narrow strait carrying experience in its crowded pace. It flowed, emerging into upper light from the deep pool of its subliminal birth to reach some high existence still unknown. There was no thinking self. Aim there was none. All was unrecognized stress and seeking vague. Only to the unstable surface rose sensations, steps and edges of desire and passions leaps and brief emotions cries. A casual colloquy of flesh with flesh, a murmur of heart to longing wordless heart Glimmerings of knowledge with no shape of thought and jets of subconscious will or hunger's pulse. All was dim sparkle on a foaming top. It whirled around a drifting shadow self in an inconscient flood of force in time. Then came the pressure of a seeing power that drew all into a dancing turbid mass circling around a single luminous point, center of reference in a conscious field, figure of a unitary light within. It lit the impulse of the half-sentient flood even an illusion gave of fixity, as if a sea could serve as a firm soil. That strange observing power imposed its sight. It forced on flux a limit and a shape. It gave its stream a lower narrow bank drew lines to snare the spirit's formlessness. It fashioned the life mind of bird and beast, the answer of the reptile and the fish, the primitive 
pattern of the thoughts of man. The finite movement of the infinite came winging its way through a wide air of time. A march of knowledge moved in nations and guarded in the form a separate soul. It's right to be immortally reserved, but built a wall against the siege of death and threw a hook to clutch eternity. A thinking entity appeared in space. A little ordered world broke into view where being at prison room for act and sight. A floor to walk a clear but scanty range. An instrument personality was born, and a restricted, clamped intelligence consented to restrain in narrow bounds its seeking. It tied the thought to visible things, prohibiting the adventure of the unseen and the soul's trade through unknown infinites. The reflex reason, nature of its glass, illumined life to know and fix its field, accepting a dangerous, ignorant brevity and the inconclusive purpose of its walk, and profited by the hour's precarious chance in the allotted boundaries of its fate. A little joy and knowledge satisfied, this little being tied into a knot and hung on a bulge of his environment, a little curve cut off in measureless space, a little span of life in all vast time. A thought was there that planned a will that strove, but for small aims within a narrow scope, wasting unmeasured toil on transient things. It knew itself a creature of the mud. It asked no larger law, no loftier air. It had no inward loop, no upward gaze. A backward scholar on logic's rickety bench Indoctrinated by the eyeing sense, it took appearance for the face of God, for casual lights the marching of the suns, for heaven a starry strip of doubtful blue, aspects of being fain to be the whole. There was a voice of busy interchange, a marketplace of trivial thoughts and acts. A life soon spent, a mind the body slain, here seemed the brilliant crown of nature's works, and tiny egos to the world as means, to sate a while, dwarf lusts and brief desires. In a death-closed passage saw life start and end, as though a blind alley were creation's sign, as if for this the soul had coveted birth in the wonderland of a self-creating world and the opportunities of cosmic space. This creature, passionate only to survive, fettered to puny thoughts with no wide range, and to the body's needs and pangs and joys, this fire, growing by its fuel's death, increased by what it seized and made its own. It gathered and grew and gave itself to none. Only it hoped for greatness in its den and pleasure and victory in small fields of power and conquest of life room for self and kin, an animal limited by its feeding space. 
He knew not the mortal in its house. It had no greater, deeper cause to live. In limits only, it was powerful. Acute to capture truth for outward use, its knowledge was the body's instrument. Absorbed in the little works of its prison house, it turned around the same unchanging points in the same circle of interest and desire, but thought itself the master of its jail. Although for action, not for wisdom made, Thought was its ethics, or its gutter's rim. It saw an image of the external world, and saw itself itself, but knew no more. Out of a slow, confused, embroiled self-search, mind grew to a clarity cut out, precise, a gleam, and closed in a stone ignorance. In this bound thinking's narrow leadership, tied to the soil, inspired by common things, attached to a confined familiar world, amid the multitude of our motived plots, our changing actors and our million masks, life was a play monotonously the same. There was no vast perspectives of the spirit, no swift innovations of unknown delight, no golden distances of white release. This petty state resembled our human base. But fixed to eternity of changeless time, a moment's movement doomed to last through time, Existence, bridge-like, spend the inconscient gulps, a half-illumined building in a mist, which from a void of form arose to sight and jutted out into a void of soul. A little light in a great darkness born, life knew not where it went, or whence it came. Around all floated still the nation haze. 